Marcellus, I'll start with you. Yeah. Y'all didn't laugh hard enough when I said I was dating a woman in a nursing home. Mm. <laughs> it met oh, our expectations. That was real. <laughs> be true. I mean, we're yeah. like, you're blurring the lines here. It could be real. <laughs> All right. Is Carson Wentz <laughs> taking too much heat for the Eagles' slow start? Uh, no, he's not taking too much heat. Look, I could go down the list and everything you said in statistical form. Uh, losing team since he returned from injury last year, that's damning right there. We could talk about no Alshon Jeffrey, no Deshaun Jackson. Hey, double Zach Ertz and you, you got this offense. We get all that. All offensive line, futile effort, getting sacks, giving up sacks. But let's talk about this. When you get all the money, you get all the hell that comes with it. You get all the criticism. You get all the scrutiny. And we know that. And these football players are simple, but they're smart. I hate when people say that football players weren't smart. Because I'm going to apply right now the substitution theory of geometry to this situation in Philadelphia. I've been there before. And we all know the substitution property, don't we? I bet we don't. All right, let's go back to my eighth grade year. When if there are two congruent properties then you can exchange them and everything works out just fine. You ready for this, Whitlock? If Carson Wentz is supposed to be who he is and he's better than Nick Foles or at least comparable, then we should be able to exchange them in this system and it just runs as well as it did with Nick Foles. Problem with it is the results are not the same. So now we have to start to look at the individuals. Carson Wentz puts up numbers. Carson Wentz was a former MVP candidate. Carson Wentz, we know, has been undermined by injuries. But that's not how players think. We're smarter than you think we are, and we're also as simple as you think we are. Why aren't we as good with you as we are with Nick Foles? And until you can answer that, we can riddle off stats, we can riddle off numbers, we can riddle off situations. But players are feeling this deep down in the primal sense. This team is better. This offense runs better with that guy who's gone more than the guy who's getting all the money right now. Got to fix that equation in their heads. I, it, it's interesting you bring it up because chemistry becomes such a big part of football. The chemistry we have, the believability that we have in one another. Now, do I think that Carson Wentz takes too much of the blame? Yeah, but get this. The quarterback position, you should deflect 100% of the of the success or the credit when it comes your way, and you should accept 100% of the blame. Hmm. And that's part of playing quarterback in this league. Seven drops. You mentioned the offensive line. They thought, like, to me, that's a group of players that are playing with a body clock. And you know what a body clock will get you? A body clock will get your butt beat. That's 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and I'm spent because the ball should be out. Hmm. Right? And when you start to play like that – I don't necessarily look at the players and say they stink. I look at the coaches and say, what are you coaching? Because you're either coaching it or you're allowing it to happen. And if that's what's being allowed to happen, then you're not supporting that quarterback. And so I look at this as more of a team issue than a Carson Paul, uh, excuse me, Carson Wentz issue. Carson Wentz is a damn good quarterback, but he's not getting the most of his out of his team. And that goes back to the coaching staff and what they're allowing to happen within that organization. Well, when you're a superstar, and I not bragging, but I have no, been a superstar. A superstar. Mm-hmm. And, and, and sometimes it's no fun. And you do get all the blame, even though other people around you are not playing well. Uh, being running back is really hard because you depend on the guys up front. And I went through it where, man, you're not running. The, the people, well, people will say, he's not running the same. It's nowhere to run. <laughs> I mean, you out here, it's a little different. It's nowhere to run. Uh, with Carson Wentz, you can say that, you know, Alshon Jeffries is not there, Deshaun Jackson is not there. You need those guys. Those are, those are the guys that was there through training camp. You worked, you, you, you know them. And all of a sudden now you got backups. And backups, that's why they're backups. They are backups for a reason. That hurts this football team. Most definitely, I look at they won the Redskins game. They beat the Washington Redskins. They came back. They had Atlanta beat. He brought them back. Carson Wentz did. Now, it's not on him that he, this, the defense gives up a 50-yard screen to uh, uh, was, um, Julio Jones. No, Julio Jones. Julio Jones. Oh, that's right, yeah. Julio Jones. Julio Jones. I mean, that's, that's not his fault. So, you know, I look at the offensive line. In one point, yeah, that, that is a, that's a team effort. I think that they might have thought the ball was out. You can see they didn't lay down on him. It was like, oh, 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 oh damn, did the ball ain't gone yet? Everybody come back to block. And- Marcellus made a great point yesterday, though. Mm. That was a three-man rush. That means eight people are dropping. That means you need to block longer. 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 <laughs> a lot longer. So, yeah. you know, 
uh, I, I still say that all the blame is not on right. Carson Wentz. It also means it also means at some point, if you can hold them out for five seconds, which they did before he got <laughs> sacked, somebody's got somebody. Got to to your point, it, I don't care how many guys you have back. If I can't, we used to say it in Denver all the time. Mike Shanahan used to say this all the time. If you can't beat man coverage, you know what? You're going to be selling cars. <laughs> and, and the bottom line is, it's not his fault that, that Goddard dropped a touchdown pass. That there was another pass that was dropped. Seven passes dropped within this game. That takes him from a 50-whatever percent completion percentage up to a 72 if those balls are caught. And those are two touchdowns. And they're giving up 26 points a game. So it's, it is a – there's no question it's a team effort. But the easiest guy to point, to your point in your essay, the easiest guy to point the blame to is number 11. I, I'm going to circle back to you, Mark, because you're the only one here with Super Bowl experience. My point uh, previously has been I think the Eagles, other than Carson Wentz, still have a bit of a Super Bowl hangover. Mm. They're satisfied. Damn, who were they drinking? A, they've accomplished <laughs> – yep. Carson Wentz rode the bench or was hurt and wasn't a part of it. The rest of these guys, from the coaching staff to the guys on the field – they're satisfied, in my opinion. Well, I don't know that they're satisfied, but right <laughs> now when you put on the film, they're not executing. So is that because they're satisfied? Is that because things are hunky-dory? I, like, I don't know. I can't read into their minds. But the bottom line, if you want to have success, you have got to go out and you have got to execute. And you've got to catch those balls. And you've got to do those. The difference between winning and losing in this league is razor thin. Mm -hmm. And it's about guys executing at the point where they're asked to execute in the critical situations. And when you put on Philly and you study on tape, they don't have enough guys making plays in critical situations. I want to say this. Um, it's unfair that he's getting this criticism, but yeah. it's a reality. You can talk about seven drops and missing all these players. Yeah. Nobody gives a damn. Talk about a running back right here. Oh, man, there's nowhere to run. We can't block them all. No one gives a damn. We need to see 1,500, 2,000 out of you, ED. When I played, oh, they double teamed me. They triple teamed me, Marty. Bill Parcells, we don't give a damn. Yeah. Because here's the equation that I think players always look at when you talk about the highest paid on your team but still up and coming. I was that guy in San Diego. Objectively, you're the highest paid. We can see your contract. Good Lord, you're making money. But subject subjectively, are you the best player on our team? So when we have that equation, we start to get into some chemistry issues, some perception issues, and then you rely on numbers like this. That solves the equation for the players. Look at this in fourth quarter comebacks and game-winning drive opportunities. Guess who's the worst among mm. all active quarterbacks? Carson That's damning. Wentz. Now, so, <laughs> so, look, I'm just trying to create the psychology around why we have issues for you, right. why we don't block for you, why you can see there's some chemistry sure. disturbances here. It's because you're getting the most money, you haven't accomplished the most, and are you really the best? And then when money time comes, you're not one of the worst. You're the worst in the NFL you calculate all that. Now you can see why the players act. Yeah, you, you but definitely you have to still that. look. Carson is still a young quarterback. Uh -huh. I mean, he really is. He's a young quarterback. I mean, and I think, you know, at the quarterback position, you expect so much out of a guy that was at one point possibly going to be the MVP before he got hurt. So I see all, you know, all the, the, the criticism that goes along with it. But you know, like you said, when you play that position, mm. if you're the superstar, you get the criticism. But he still is. People understand He's still a young quarterback, and I, and I like him as a quarterback. He's still a very good quarterback. I mean, I would be happy to have him on my team because he's not winning. I mean, that's not all his fault. It's like I can't throw the ball, and I can't catch the ball. I can't be the quarterback, and I can't go make the tackles also. I play quarterback. Mm. Well, let's ask this question. Thursday night, they got to turn around on short and play the Green Bay Packers, one of the best teams in football. <clears throat> I see it as a must win. I think next, the following week, I think they play the Jets. And then after that, it's a tough stretch of games for about four or five weeks. They can't, the Cowboys off to a 3 0 start, probably get to 4 0. I see this as a must win game this Thursday. And I don't, um, because I take that literally. Like when you say must win, that's a literal statement. And it's not. Let's just be real. If this team loses again and they they're go out there and they're 1 and 3, like, Sky's not falling. I've been on the 0-3 team that won 10 games, made the playoffs. So we know mathematically they're not out of it. So it's not a must win. We also know that the Dallas Cowboys more than likely are not going to win all their games. 
And you have two games against them to bring them back to you, make them regress to the mean. Look at the Cowboys' next six games. Saints, Packers, Jets, Eagles, Giants, Vikings, and then you got to play the Eagles again. So there is a silver lining in case they lose again. Hey, we're not out of it mathematically, and we got to play them boys twice. I, I love – this is what I love about the NFL. There's only 16 of them. So, as a player, they all feel like must-wins. You know, you get <laughs> to that point where you're like – you're always kind of mashed down on the panic button. They have got to play better. Mm-hmm. They have got – I mean, I understand that it's not a must-win, but I get your point. And it, it's starting to feel like it's getting late early if you're the Eagles right now. So – that's that's part of the reality of of the way this this league operates. But this is such a week to week league, and you'll see a team that drops an egg that looks horrible one week and bounces back and has a great you know a great week the next week. So, you know, is it a must win? No, but it's certainly starting to feel like they're in that kind of crunch time. It's a must win because they fall three games behind the Cowboys. Because you got to understand. They're going to lose again. <laughs> They're just not going to run the table. That's going to happen. The Cowboys may lose, but if you steal three games behind, that hurts. I mean, realistically, looking at, at the games that they played, the Redskins, the Lions, and the Falcons, they should be 3-0. and They really should. Or at worst, 2-1. and And as a locker room, you know this, I know this. You sit in the locker room and say, man, we should be 2 and We should be 3-0. and Oh, we should be We should be 2-1. and Worst, we should be 2-1. and We shouldn't have lost to the Lions. When I saw this, I'm like... I'm like, Billy lost to the Lions? I was shocked. Then I look at the stats. I'm like, okay, the Lions didn't have great stats, but Philly had better. If you just looked at stats-wise, you think, okay, Philly won this game. And then you look at the score like, oh, they lost. So, you know, I just feel like that they this is a must-win for them. Yeah, you start giving away games. Again, you, the Julio Jones play at the end of the yeah. game. Then you, then you drop a game-winning touchdown pass. There's only so many games you can just give away – and not pay a real penalty for them. And, and I just think looking at their future schedule, they could mess around and get to Thanksgiving and just be so far behind. And, and again, if they lose Thursday night, again, they'll have 10 days off. But that's 10 days of, to me, finger pointing at this point. And more fingers may get pointed at Carson Wentz and undermine the chemistry of the team. What we're highlighting right now is the balancing act that is so difficult for a coaching staff is create a sense of urgency without lying to your team. Think about it, because if you go out there and say this is a must win, you're lying. It's not a must win. Last year, case in point, Carolina Panthers, six and two. Everybody was basically saying, mail in their playoff. They're going to be in there. They end up seven and nine out the playoffs. So this thing can flip, as Mark said, week to week. How do you create that urgency? But being realistic about the perspective, right. what's going well, on? I, th- I think you, you end up putting all these teams, go, or all these plays go, here's a play we missed, here's a play we missed, here's a lack of execution, here's a lack of effort, here's a lack. We make those things, and you're sitting there at 3-0 and or 2-1, and like ED said. Yeah. And, and that's the realistic nature. of You guys clean up your act, and we're going to be in this thing. Mm-hmm. But t- if that doesn't happen, we, we're not going to win one game. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak for Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.